All right, boys, just hold it right where you are. Well, Hoss, Red, what an unexpected pleasure. You're just in time for an evening repast. Oh, honey, I was afraid you didn't get my letter. Letter? What letter? Why, you ungrateful snake in the grass. Don't look to me for no sympathy, you dirty black skunk! If you two ain't just about the worst reprobates I ever seen, living out here in this comfortable cabin and cooking beans, underwear, while poor little Dan Pettibone sits in that jailhouse. Dan's in jail? What'd he steal? Nothing. You got blamed for what you stole. You still got that money, ain't you? That money is a sacred trust. We're guarding it with our lives. Every penny of it is right there under the bed. In that valise. Oh. Charge! To the barricades! Attack! Hit him with something! <laughs> about over. He didn't shoot me. Ain't that, ain't that gun loaded? Won't he shoot? He'll shoot. It's a weakness I had since I was a boy. I never could shoot a friend. What I can't figure out is, is why you wanted to take that money in the first place. If you wanted to get rich, you could have you stayed with a Pettibone Power Wagon Company and got ten times richer, just like you said. Why did you have to steal? Because I'm dishonest. All right, you two stand right there by the bar. Stay put. Here it is, boys. Every penny of it. There's Mr. Throckmorton to tell you how sorry him and Pete are for trying to run off with it. Well, yeah. What's the matter with everybody? I brought your money back to you. I 
I reckon it's my place to tell you, Hoss. I fixed up a mess of tar and feathers and threatened Dan Pettibone with them. Doc says his heart failed him. He passed away. He died? Is Mrs. Sedek any time, Hoss. Yeah, I reckon I knew that. But I'll guarantee you one thing. Dan Pettibone didn't die of fright. He wasn't scared of nobody. That don't make the news no better, though, does it? Take it kindly if you give the widow Pettibone the money I invested. That's, that's a lot of money, Mr. Ogilvy. Not enough. Not nearly enough. Well, come on, Jeff. Let's get back to the mine. Jiggery, ain't you fellas gonna take yours? Ah, we don't want it. Don't need it. Come on. Yeah. We'd spend it on booze anyway. And I tried to steal from them. You know, my boy, I'm an unmitigated scoundrel. I shall ask the judge for 20 years. You know, Hoss, Pete here never wanted to steal that money. All he ever wanted to do was to marry Big Red there. It's all he still wants to do. Marriage? Did anybody say marriage? I did. Hansy Bunsy. Weedy Pie. <laughs> you know, I wonder if the sheriff could put Pete's bill on my tab. Mr. Throckmorton, I'll do everything in my power to see that you get your wish. Ain't much of that, that uh, Scottish shield, ain't, ain't much of it left. Couple of drops. Mm. Yeah. Can't get over it. I'm pretty old big red looking there. Brand new wedding dress. Yeah. Old Pete was as spruce as a brand new tattoo. You know, I can't get over those people letting Trunk Morton and Pete go scot free after them stealing that money. Well, Paul, they didn't really steal it. They they were in charge of the money and they everybody figures they just took a ride with it and then brung it back. Yeah. Oh, that didn't didn't Dan have any plans for this thing? Yeah, his missus took him back east with her. Said that folks just wasn't ready for it yet. Was gonna save him for their boy. I didn't know they had a boy. They ain't now. But come the middle of June. <laughs> Say it would have worked. 